Mr. Doug Williams, welcome back to Comedy Hype. How you been? Great, man. Great. Um, you know, God has been really, really good, man. Uh, you know, I have a production company. I'm working with Comedy Hype on some things uh, okay. that are going to be coming uh, soon that people are going to see. And uh, we're doing a reboot of the First Amendment, the oh. show that I had with Martin Lawrence. Uh, Martin Lawrence presents the First Amendment. Well, uh, we're doing the First Amendment. So we're bringing that back because of... Uh, all of the controversy that had been, right. you know, swirling around comedians, their right, right to speak. Dave Chappelle, the controversy right. that happened with him speaking, and uh, you know, comedians have essentially been under attack. And uh, you know, that's a big topic for conversation with comedians. What can you talk about? What can't you mm -hmm. talk about? Cancel culture. Uh, Chris Rock had his special out. He got a whole lot of blowback from that. So uh, you know, that that First Amendment show was a. Uh, instrumental show yeah you know we had tiffany haddish on that show we had uh leslie jones on that show we had dr ken uh on the show mm -hmm. uh cheryl underwood was on the show so a lot of people have gone on Dion cole have gone on from that show it uh created a lot of opportunities and we're bringing it back and as far as what was your role with that particular um were you producer with co so a lot of people don't know this and that's what i'm saying you know so, so many things got lost in the shuffle uh i created it produced it uh went out and raised the money for it. And I've actually uh, partnered with my wife now. Uh, I, I actually went back and got the rights to the First Amendment. Wow. So uh, we had to really fight to get the rights back. We got those rights. So my wife and I, along with a, 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 our partner, Rob Markovich, who uh, <clears throat> actually is a part of a documentary that we're doing, uh, and people who come to know him better, we are uh, we have some uh, interest in bringing the First Amendment back. So for people who don't know, just Google First Amendment, stand up, go on YouTube, mm -hmm. Gary Owens. A lot of people that you see that have gone on to be, become really big were a part of the show. Who, is, uh, who are some of the comedians that you're looking to hopefully join you guys? Did you? Well, you know, from? our aim for the show early on always was to showcase because the First Amendment came along when there was a lull in comedy. Okay. Comic View wasn't uh, running anymore. Deaf Comedy Jam had gone away. And I want people to understand that this is the show that launched the Stars Network. So when you see Power and when you see all of those shows that 50 Cent is doing uh, on the Stars Network, this show was the flagship show for the Stars Network. And I kind of feel like they got away from, you know, urban. And when I say urban, I don't mean black. I just mean the flavor. They got away. They started doing, you know, big budget shows. Yeah. And I don't think those shows panned out. So now you see Stars coming back now to power and those type of shows uh, that essentially launched the network because uh, First Amendment was an urban, you know, no holds barred stand-up uh, comedy show. So uh, I think they're getting back to that and uh, I think the time is right now. The point I was making, Netflix, they're focusing on specials. Yeah. But we really don't have any stand-up comedy shows now where you get to see uh, new talent in this age of uh, social media and mm -hmm. you know where can you go now to watch up and coming urban comics you can't see them on late night you're not seeing them so I think the timing is perfect to bring back the first amendment and that's yeah. what we're doing now um, I couldn't help but have to ask you the question um, this Jamie Foxx stuff man the story that we're seeing um, a few months ago we would hear about Jamie having this health scare do you uh, did you what was your reaction to hearing this news about possibly like I think some people were alluding that we might have lost Jamie or we're going to lose him. You know, I was very shocked. You know, it's almost like Kobe. You remember when Kobe died? Yeah, I mean, you can almost remember where you were and what you were doing when you heard that and how you were yeah. like, this can't be true. And when I heard that about Jamie, man, I was really, really shocked. You know, the guy is just such an incredible performer. And we feel like, you know, these are people that we know. We see them so much. And I was just praying that uh, then I immediately put out a post, right. you know, sending up prayers and, and, and wishing the best for him. And uh, yeah, man. And I think just just from being a black comedian, we all identify with the struggle mm. because, you know, Jamie's story is really all of our story. You can't, we came out to Hollywood. We stood in line at the clubs we, right. and he paid that due. So the same thing with Kobe is synonymous with Kobe. I think one of the hurtful things about Kobe is that he dedicated his life to basketball. Kobe lived and breathed basketball. Mm -hmm. And the moment he retired and he had an opportunity to spend with his family and his girls, his life was taken away. So I think that's the same thing with Jamie, somebody who worked so hard and became an Oscar winner and you get to the top of the mountain and then all of a sudden he's so young and then to have your life, you know, snatched away from you. So, 
you know, I, I haven't gotten an update. I don't know where things are with right. that. But obviously, you know, just praying and hoping that uh, that he can overcome and that, you know, he'll be back to making movies. Yeah, I think some people would um, naturally project that you might have felt or you would feel happy about it because of this roast. What's your real thoughts about just knowing that, like, even though you had this history with Jamie, like, what's your real thoughts about seeing what he might be having to endure? And, see, and to me, that kind of plays into... You know, we often say, and I'm just using this as an analogy, we look up and we say the sky is blue, but we know once you get up there, it's black, it's space or whatever. And I think people have read into that that roast so much that it's, it's like a soap opera. And they think that, you know, that, that we're sinister and that we're against each other and it's not like that at all. And that's 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 one of the things that I, I, I think that people need to realize about Hollywood. You know, just to give you an example, I had this preconceived notion about Hollywood before I came out here and I started them. But people, do you know that the ice chips that whenever they're filming and they have drinks on the table, that those ice chips in the glass are plastic because they want continuity because when they do the scene over, they right. need to have their drink feel the same way. And so, you know, that's not the perception of what you see in the comments that you see with that roast or whatever. That's that's not what what's really going on. You know, uh, I have nothing but love for Jamie and, and, and all of the... Comedians, especially, you know, that's that's special to me. That, yeah. You know. If Jamie was uh, watching this, what would you maybe sort of tell him if he would ever see this interview? Oh man, and we're praying for you, man, and we want to see you back up there singing and and making movies. And uh, because when this is a small town, so when one black actor or one black singer or one black rapper excels, it really just opens up the door for all of us. So uh, you know, <laughs> I've seen Jamie this. You know, in fact, I want him to, to 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 keep going because right now I'm in the process. I'm doing a comedy special. You know, uh, we're doing, and it's going to be a different type of comedy special okay. because we're kind of in a, you know, we're weaving my life in uh, this documentary that we're doing. It's a documentary slash. It's going to be something new. It's a hybrid, and it's going to be phenomenal. And we, you know, we're going to touch on where I come from and my journey, mm -hmm. and you know, sprinkle in some of that roast. So this is. This is a phenomenal thing that, we're, that that I'm doing, that I'm working on, that I've partnered with my wife, is producing with me, that, you know, it's just going to be great. So, uh, yeah, just yeah. nothing but the How best. How long have you been working on this uh, project? We've been working on this project uh, for about a year and a half now. We've been okay. working on this project. And, you know, uh, I just, my story has never been out there mm -hmm. in terms of, you know, a small town guy. I come from Montgomery, Alabama. I come from the cradle of the civil rights movement. You know, I was raised by two parents. You know, one was uh, a church going mother and my father was a notorious drug dealer in a small town that he got arrested. So, you know, I'm trying to get that story out. And uh, all of this is a part of my journey and a part of that narrative uh, of getting the story yeah. out. So I'm, I'm really excited about it. We've been shooting it. It's coming out great. And I, I really want people to uh, to see a different side of me. Yeah. And I think they will with this documentary. Yeah. I can't help but think about like black men and health and related to the Jamie conversation. Is that something that um, you're becoming more conscious about in terms of as you become an older man? And is it something that you just you think about like I need to take care of myself because you are on the road a lot? Absolutely, and I'm glad you that you know that's it's critical that you brought that up. And if people don't hear anything else from this interview, I want people to know how important it is to be healthy, mm -hmm. and especially with us. Because I see comics that I started out with, and you just see people in general and how they put on 30 and 40 pounds. You know, my, my father used to always tell me, you know, you never see fat old people. So we have mm -hmm. to get, uh, we have to really work on taking care of ourselves. Like I do, uh, 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 my wife and I, we're big into fasting. We don't eat past seven o'clock at night. We try not to eat before 12 o'clock noon. And I've been able, by the grace of God, to keep my weight down, to stay healthy, to stay active. So I think that's very important. And if there's anything to come out of any situation where there's been a health scare or where somebody has fallen ill because of their health, mm -hmm. I think that 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 is notion for us to always be health conscious and, and especially comedians out there. Yeah. And I want to look in the camera now and say, because it's so hard when you're doing, when you're performing late at night and you're, you're, you're in a different time zone. And now to stay on a regiment 
no matter where you are and to take care of yourself. Because we've lost a lot of comedians, man. Yeah. I mean, over the last couple of years, we've lost a lot of comedians. In Los Angeles in particular. Too. A lot. Of, we've, we've just had to deal with a lot of death. And if there's anything, you, especially with COVID now, if there's anything you can do to give yourself a better chance of living longer, the, the one thing you can do is eat right, exercise, and take care of yourself. And that's very, very important, man. I just lost my mother-in-law to pancreatic cancer. Okay. And before that, she lost like a lot of weight. And we as a people, we're so anti-doctor. Okay. You know, and she was losing weight. And my wife and kept saying, hey, mom, you know, you're losing weight. And she just moved out from New York. So she kept saying, oh, the food. This, and she kept making right. excuses for it. And by the time we found out that she had it, she was in a fight for her life. So I think it's imperative that we get regular checkups, get your prostate mm -hmm. checked, get your colon checked. You know, my wife, uh, I'm guilty of this. My wife really had to push me right. to go get a colonoscopy. Why do you think black men don't just make that a habit? Why do, what do we afraid Because of? I think that a lot of times we as a people, period, not just as black people, we feel like if nothing's wrong, I'm cool. You know, I'd rather not know. You know, if, if something's going on with me, I, I'm going to feel bad. Yeah. So until I feel bad, I'm good. And that's the wrong attitude to take because a lot of times when you start feeling bad, it's too late. So my wife really, and that's, the, I have to say, man, that's one of the beautiful things about being married is that when you have a, your wife makes sure, hey, you're going to get this colonoscopy. You're going to get this prostate check. You're gonna, and whereas I might not have done that. And I, I want to put that out, especially to black and brown men. Go to the doctor. Get those checkups. Because the worst thing that can happen to you is to be in a position where someone says, hey, if you had just come in two or three months or four months earlier, mm -hmm. you'd be in a different fight right now. I can't help but notice the uh, Alabama State University had, you have a, from what I know that you went to school there, Alabama State University. Hey, I just want to say, too, about Alabama State University. The HBCU, I have nothing but love for all HBCUs. But, yeah, I represent. I graduated from Alabama State. Two Chains is from Alabama State. Ricky Smiley is from Alabama State. Okay. We have a new coach now. You know, the big thing when uh, primetime Deion Sanders yeah. was with the Jacksonville, got into it with Eddie Robinson, who's uh, uh, who played in the NFL. But, yeah, I'm always representing uh, HBCUs. And, look, this is important. Mm -hmm. I have a son now who's playing football okay. and he's playing uh, and he's trying to, he's uh, looking to get a scholarship and I've been really pushing HBCUs on him. I've been trying to get him, you know, HBC, HBC. So I wear all this stuff. When you see me <laughs> like this, this is subliminal. I walk in front of my son. I want him to see, you know, these colors sort of rub off on him uh, so he can go to an HBCU. My wife is always like, hey, you got to let them choose their own path. But yeah, I'm always trying to represent Alabama State University, born and bred Montgomery, Alabama. Yeah, so I'm guessing that's going to be um, what we also hear in uh, this documentary that you're working on. We, are we going to learn about? That? You know what? I, I really, you know, because every time you bring up the doc, I'm so excited about this documentary because uh, for the first time, we, we, we I'm talking about, uh, you know, my dad and 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 growing up in a, you know, with my dad selling drugs and, you know, my mom being in the church and her taking the, you know, she was always in constant, you know, what do I do with this money? So she gave it to the church thinking that, you know, it's money from drugs, but I'll clean it up by giving 10% of it to, to the church and, and having to walk that tightrope of, of, you know, cause all you hear, you know, don't talk to drug dealers, stay away from drug dealers. I heard that at school so much. And then I come home and my dad is, you know, cooking crack in the kitchen. So this is going to be just a, a, a phenomenal documentary. And then when you tie it into my stand up and to everything that I've gone through in this town, uh, to where we are now, it's going to be phenomenal. And uh, I'm looking forward to uh, getting it out there for comedy hype to put it out there before the world. It's going to be a, a, a I'm, I'm just saying I'm really excited about it. Well, Mr. Doug Williams, this was a great check in of what you had going on. And we look forward to seeing what you do in the coming years. Hey, thank you. Always, I just want to make sure you put this on. You guys are doing a fantastic, Comedy Hype is doing a fantastic job of keeping everybody abreast on what's going on in the comedy world, in particular in the comedy world that I came up in. Mm. You know what I mean? It's so much, it's a, such a rich culture when you look at where we've come from, from Richard Pryor to, and that's one of the things I wanted to say about the First Amendment. You know, one of the greatest things that I felt we were able to do with the First Amendment, we gave Dick Gregory probably his last 
television performance mm -hmm. was on the First Amendment. Okay. And uh, I've just been fueled by, by comedy, and especially black comedy. And you guys have just done an excellent job of keeping us informed. So keep doing what you're Thank doing. You.